Miałem niezwykle oryginalnego ojca. Ojciec był właścicielem wydawnictwa Sefer, które nie przynosiło wprawdzie żadnych dochodów, ale pozwalało mu znosić strach przed depresyjną pamięcią i klaustrofobią. Na szczęście pracował w Instytucie Historycznym jako detektyw, bo któż inny może być historykiem, jeżeli nie detektyw. Zostawił mi trudny do rozstrzygnięcia testament, z którym nie mogę uporać się do dzisiaj. Byłem jedynakiem. W dzieciństwie marzyłem, aby zostać lekarzem, adwokatem, żebrakiem, muzykiem, aktorem, demonem i komiwojażerem. Zgodnie z życzeniem całej rodziny ukończyłem medycynę i jako psychiatra zajmowałem się psychoterapią. Dzięki tym niezwykłym studiom połączyłem się na zawsze z demonami naszego czasu. Rodziców, ja jestem rocznikiem powojennym. Ta wojna gdzieś tylko dotyczyła mnie tyle, ile dotyczyła moich rodziców, jeżeli chodzi o teren, jeżeli chodzi o lata. I tutaj nagle było dla mnie coś bardzo nowego. To była pierwsza inspiracja. Many years later, father was already dead. A strange parcel came from Argentina. It was a humor, a humid summer Saturday, the only day I used to devote to the publishing house, which by then had folded anyway. I looked at the clock on the wall. It was close to four. Typescripts were still flocking to our address and lay on the desk like a heap of snow shoved in the gutter. But as father used to say after Martin Luther, thoughts are tax free and only they are worth our time. I was tired of the sunsets I'd read about hundreds of times. The same wind kept turning the pages, the protagonist was recycled too. I could easily write a monograph about him. Usually he was infected with loneliness and scoured the world around him for the source of his disease. Depression-inducing hormones plagued him. Life felt to him like an isolation ward. Sometimes he was dependent on drugs or alcohol, and then oh so easily he succumbed to the cult of writing. I opened the next envelope. An Argentinian stamp caught my eye. It was a short letter. Dear Professor, it was to my father. I have not heard from you for years. As for our business, as you can guess, time has done its work. They are either dead or down with Alzheimer's. I myself can't believe I'm 70. I'm forwarding you a typescript that a rather strange individual gave me to pass on to you. He sometimes did bits and pieces for me, but I can't remember anymore how I met him. A long cream envelope was attached to the typescript with a paper clip. Out from it, I pulled a small sheet of white paper folded double. My name is Elim T. I'm a hunter. For many years, I have been hunting for my life. I am sending you a fragment of my helplessness. I shall call you. I poured myself a glass of wine, put on my spectacles and began to read. Soon I was drawn into the magical geography of this short text, echoes of a journey into Poland. He fell upon the little town, sudden as sin. On the hill overlooking the forest, he rented a house whose owners had been living abroad for the past five years with an aunt in Buenos Aires. In the visitor's book they wrote, don't be surprised if you find the lights are on in our house. He registered his name, Al Tikre. Must be a Turk or some foreigner or a Mason, definitely not Polish. A Pole would have a Polish name, wouldn't he? What's he doing in our town doing nothing? Apparently, he was the devil's servant, the catechism teacher said in school. A roadside angel, argued the hairdresser, because she always saw him run in the road, immortal. Sometimes he dropped into the albatross bar and drank red wine. He ate the fog. Somebody from town saw him. The chemist said he had trouble with insomnia. A few saw him talking to himself, but they couldn't hear anything. He was stealing our space. Książka w zasadzie składa się z wielu opowiadań i dygresji. Ten, ten czon, który tutaj, który główny może nawet czytany tutaj przed chwilą, dotyczył wydarzeń wojny i przeszłości. Mianowicie pracując w Wiedniu, w Instytucie Polskim, to były lata 90. Centrum dokumentacyjne Szymona Wizentala przygotowywało jego wizytę 
do Polski pierwszą, po, po 50 latach pierwszą w Polsce wizytę Te jego. Dokumenty. Obecny ambasador, ówczesny ambasador y, y, Władysław Bartoszewski oddelegował mnie jako pracownika Instytutu do przygotowania, współprzygotowania tej wizyty. Wcześniej no, dla mnie była to wspaniała okazja, to bardzo ciekawy człowiek, była to wspaniała okazja do rozmów. I w tym samym, tak się zdarzyło, że w tym samym momencie ambasada argentyńska przesłała do Centrum Dokumentacyjnego notes zmarłego w Argentynie Niemca, bo jak Państwo wiecie, bardzo dużo nazistów uciekło do takich krajów jak właśnie Argentyna, Chile, Ekwador. A równocześnie myślę, że jest to książka o przemijaniu, o pamięci. I tak się czasami zastanawiam, że może tego wszystkiego jest nawet za dużo w tej książce. Ale... Jak przyjechał do Wiednia Christian Lupa, znany Państwu zapewne reżyser, który wtedy reżyserował, robił adaptację opowiadania Tomasa Bernharda, Kalkwerk. I strasznie chciał jak gdyby dotknąć tych miejsc, gdzie przebywał Tomasz Bernhard. Ale Tomasz Bernhard był, chorował na płuca i leżał w takim szpitalu y, chorób płuc na pięknym wzgórzu Baumgarten. A obok w szpitalu, nazwijmy to dla nerwowo chorych, żeby nie powiedzieć wariatów, rezydował bardzo często wnuk lud, filozofa, y, krewny filozofa Ludwika y, Wittgensteina, Aha, Paweł Wittgenstein. Okay. E, e, e. I ten Paweł Wittgenstein spotykał się e, z Tomasem Bernhardem i rozmawiali o różnych sprawach. Oni się przyjaźnili najczęściej od muzyce, bo Tomasz Bernhard był też muzykologiem. Okay. Opowiadam to Państwu dlatego, że myśmy wpadli na to wzgórze Baumgarten, lał straszny deszcz. I jak gdyby wpadliśmy do tego pawilonu Herman, w którym leżał nawet Tomasz Bernhard, bo to wszystko jest, bo to wszystko stoi, bo ta ławka, gdzie oni się spotykali, też jest. A, a dla nas to była taka, myślę, że my z, złapiemy tę przeszłość, że my, że my ich tam spotkamy, o, tych nieboszczyków. I czasem właśnie z takich mm, trochę metafizycznych sytuacji powstają wątki, no to właśnie, są wątki naszych wierszy, naszych opowiadań, naszych spotkań. Tak w dużym skrócie mogę powiedzieć o... Dlatego, że wiersz jest bardzo takim krótkim komunikatem. Można oczywiście o pewnych sprawach, o których tutaj opowiadałam, napisać pewnie dużo wierszy. I pe tak, i pewnie to, co dotyczy takiego tematu jak przemijanie czas, no to to gdzieś tam w, w mojej radosnej twórczości się gdzieś tam stale pojawia. Bo przecież my wszyscy, począwszy od y, y, starożytności, piszemy stale o tym samym. Czyli właśnie przemijanie, czas, miłość, śmierć, prawda? Transience, time, love, death. To But zawsze jest też moje takie pytanie, co to jest, czy, bo to, czy ktoś jest dobrym pisarzem, czy złym, to dopiero zweryfikuje nasz czas. Ever is a poet, this is a novel, and yet it's written like a poem in that every sentence has got layers of meaning into it. And maybe every sentence doesn't quite lead in the uh, direction you expect when you move to the next paragraph. In Polish literature, after the war, I mean, if you ask anybody about Polish literature who knows something about Polish literature, they will tell you that basically there was no Jewish stuff for quite a while. And after 1968, nobody really wrote about Polish Jews. This is not exactly true because for the generation that went through war, uh, 
they did write about Polish Jews, but it was not something mainstream. Mm -hmm. What is fascinating, actually, is that in the younger, uh, like the younger Polish poetry, for the generation that don't know the war, they are not even second, but third generation. Yeah, this team came back so immensely. Almost every writer, prose writer or poet, will write something, trying to understand what happened, what was, what it means to be Polish. And there are quite a few writers who will say, well, you cannot understand Polishness without understanding Jewishness. Those two things were so connected in the past. And this split between Polish and Jewish was artificial. It was strictly political. It was connected with communism. And then after 1968, it was connected with the old political campaign. Tell us, what do you think will happen in a few years? Where does interest, how will it enrich or change or influence Uh, how Paul see themselves. <laughs> Ale ja chcę powiedzieć tak, po wojnie też było sporo książek, yeah. szczególnie e, autorów, którzy przeżyli mm -hmm. wojnę. Z tym, że to było dotykanie mm, sytuacji, e, e, jakby powiedział Jasper, granicznych, But prawda? Ekstremalnych. What is interesting is the, the, the small, the little degree with which Eva engages with meaningful engagements with Jewish history in Kapów. I mean, Kharkov is one of the main places of Eastern European Jewish culture. So what we see is that this bourgeois culture is uh, where he grows up in Vienna, is one in which he lives and is indifferent to the fate of his parents, of his father. What is interesting, and this is why I think this, is, this book is a masterpiece, he doesn't take it seriously. He's insensitive. insensitive. The, the under, one of the underlying themes in the book is the inability of people to connect, the inability to create meaningful relationships. And whereas in the classical version of the travelogue, you, have, you, do a ma you make your journey and you change the journey. I mean, supposedly, you don't really, but it is a meaningful thing to travel. He goes to Kharkov, to the place where his father grew up, has his first love, He meets the daughter of the lover of his father, and poof, nothing happens. So what, what Eva is doing is a very deep critique of contemporary bourgeois culture. When, when, when I first started working on it, I hated him. <laughs> um, I thought he was a character out of a Nabokov novel. Um, someone who filtered everything that he hears or sees or does through his own sense of himself, through his own ego. But gradually, I began to realize that I was quite wrong, that he appears cold, he appears to be intellectually superior, almost because he refers to so many um, works of art, so many literary figures, and never goes into detail. Because of all of that, you think he's a snob, he's a cultural snob. But as you get more into those parts of the text where he's talking about people he knows, the history of characters who he's um, had in his family or who are patients, you realize that actually there's a deep humanity there. But it's a kind of bruised humanity. Um, he will never expose anything of himself. The character of Krakow and Vienna going back to Austro-Hungarian Empire and the fact the cities were so close in many ways and it's another layer of Krakow. And I just adore the fact of the aunt because this crazy aunt, the aunt is almost a witch. That's That's quite often in Polish literature, not in just Filipowicz, but in Kieślowski's film, in Double Life of Veronique, when she goes to Krakow, she has this very strange aunt who knows exactly when she will die, what will happen. So this element of an old, not very attractive woman from Krakow, who grew up in one of those old Krakow houses and who knows the future. And this is the aunt for me, this is the character in Eva's book that is absolutely phenomenal because there are women like this in Krakow. <laughs> Perhaps it's part of the cliché about uh, which Frasua uh, well was talking about. Why is it men? Why, why, why didn't you make a main character a woman? Dlaczego główną postacią nie jest kobieta? Dlatego, że jakoś mi dziwnie by nie pasowała do tego. Znaczy wydawało mi się, znaczy trudniej by mi było napisać to, co chciałam napisać. Poza tym ja czasem lubię się schować za... za. But there's one little story, um, which uh, we're told, which I, I, I think catches the, uh, the inadequacy of the psychotherapeutic 
processes these characters are trying to uh, pursue, um, but also um, points to their profound value. It's conversation. I used to have a patient, Dr. A, was digressing. In this book, everybody digresses. I used to have a patient, a camp survivor, who lost his wife. His second wife, actually, because his entire first family perished in the war. And all of a sudden, this old man was visited by the past. Worse, attacked by the past. When his children wanted him to move in with them, into excellent conditions, by the way, he started imagining they were taking him back to the camp. Herr Doctor, please help me. I saw him several times a week, and I said, I'm your student. Teach me history. Tell me everything. Everything you still remember. What comes back to you out of the darkness. Please be my teacher, my tutor, my mentor. It seemed to me that he'd accepted the role. He spent a few days telling me about his experiences, studying me closely. Then one day, he went silent. We were quiet for almost an hour. And then he said to me, you're cured. I can do no more. Ja chciałam... Ja chciałam powiedzieć, że dla autora jest najprzyjemniejszy moment, kiedy książka wzbudza pewne kontrowersje i jest... Bo jest, że jest czytana po prostu, bo nie może być czytana jednakowo przez wszystkich, bo to jest niemożliwe. To jest ogromnie miłe. Construct there because it seems to me that the book is about denial, um, which in society is constructed for for men and, and women as well, but as a, as a male thing. But but also, you, you know, you were talking about it being a universal problem, but I think it's also a very Polish problem because the flip side of whatever was talking about and the kind of enthusiasm and the openness and the interest. So that there is a profound denial, particularly around Jewish things that kind of, I don't know, a, a rebellion or a Holocaust fatigue or something. And, and that's a Polish problem, and it's also a European problem, isn't it? That when you actually go out there, you don't know what you're going to find. And it's a journey of discovery. And the wonder, sometimes it's a hit and miss thing. Sometimes you find somebody there, somebody who can respond, and that is, when, you, when that happens, it's absolutely magical. There are some people from the second generation who go back, but I shouldn't say go back, who, who are Americans, who go to Krakow, and the Jewish Krakow looks exactly as it looked in 1939, nothing has changed. There are some, if you go on the web, you will find some pictures of some shops with the old pre-1939 advertisements and then you will say all oh, the shops are exactly as they were in 1939 it's all illusion yeah so it is not just visually visually certain aspects are identical but it's a completely different world so people the second generation have to deal with it because it is and that's why i think actually Sefer is so fascinating because he's understated that it's never he never really says what he feels how he actually feels so that's why i always thought that he's absolutely miserable I, I never thought that he had a happy life. The fact that well, he is a so good life. Yeah, good life I mean, on the outside, yeah. But he, to me, he looks like a character who has a deep wound uh, that he carries in with him, and he goes to Krakow. He doesn't learn enough because he has to constantly contrast what he sees and what he, what his father told him and what he thinks his father told him. Yeah. A ja chciałam jeszcze wrócić do Pana, chciałam coś powiedzieć na temat, Pan tutaj napomknął o tożsamości. W rodzinach żydowskich bardzo często po wojnie następowało coś takiego, żeby dzieci najlepiej niech nie wiedzą o niczym. Bardzo często dzieci tych dzieci nagle uprzytamniają sobie swoje pochodzenie i jak gdyby nadrabiają to, co poprzednie 
pokolenie zgubiło ze względu na dramat. I bardzo często, czasami starsi rodzice są tym troszeczkę zaniepokojeni. You have the image of the theme of the novel, which is the travel, in, in uh, this uh, uh, manuscript which Sefer reads in the beginning, which is about a trip of somebody from Argentina to Poland. So it's a mirror image in the novel, so great literary artistry here. So in the book you have this sensi sensitive traveler, and you have Sefer. And this is establishing a very strong tension in the characters which are described. And, and uh, there is a very strong gender theme in this book, which is the male, people, the male characters are uh, uh, engaging with the women they meet on, the tri on their trips in, in, in a way like, like engaging with some part of the landscape. Uh, uh, it's a kind of, of occupation of, of foreign territory. It's very, very problematic, I would say. The things that his father has told him, as they become his memories, they become part of him. Następne wątki, które tam się znajdują, to tak gdyby podglądanie tego świata, tego trochę tego wrzasku cywilizacyjnego, w którym żyjemy, sensu życia, przemijania, czasu, który jest czymś ulotnym i, i, i trudno, trudnym do zdefiniowania. Thank you so much and first of all, uh, Ewa Lipska, thank you so much for being dziękuję. here. Dziękuję. Ja dziękuję Państwu.